Today I'm going to show you how to insulate the firebox in your offset and it might actually save you some money. Hey guys, John here. Today we're going to talk about insulating the firebox on your backyard offset. And this is my offset. It's the Old Country Barbecue Pits Pecos. It is a total COS, that is cheap offset. I bought this thing about a year and a half ago for just under $400, and right now it's about $500 or $500 change. But I still think it's a good buy, because when you modify this thing by extending the stack and removing the baffle, you get added airflow and convection, much like you find on a well-built, high-priced backyard offset, which may set you back three, four, or $5,000. Now, if you don't believe me, plenty of people have done this and they've been happy with the results. In fact, Jeremy Yoder made a very same video about doing these things to his Brazos. Now, we're all waiting for that video where he cooks on it, but uh, even he agreed it's a great thing to do. And if you're interested to see the videos I made last year of these modifications and all the evidence, I will link them in the description below. Now, one thing you do get when you spend money like four or $5,000 on a well-built handmade offset, uh, especially when you go to like your 250 or 500 or 1,000 gallon offset, is an insulated firebox. And an insulated firebox is very helpful because it helps retain heat. You see, fire needs three things, oxygen, fuel, and heat. And if you have less of one of these elements, you're gonna have a diminished or less efficient fire. And if you lose one completely, well, then you have no fire. So when you're dealing with a very small coal bed, especially in a small offset like this, retaining as much heat as you can is very important. That's why insulating a small firebox like this is really, really helpful. Now, how do they insulate fireboxes? Well, they take a cylinder and put a larger cylinder around it. They weld it together, and that creates an air gap in between. The air in that void is warmed by the fire inside the firebox, and that warm air helps retain heat. Now, they also may fill that void with an insulation material, which maximizes heat retention. Now, I can't weld. I'm not going to hire somebody to put a cylinder on top of this one and create an air gap or insulate it. But what I can do is insulate this thing with some fire brick. Now obviously we can't fully insulate this firebox because the brick would just fall in on itself, right? So all we can do is just build brick on the bottom and the walls. And to do this, you're gonna need about 12 or 14 bricks. Now before you run to the hardware store, I will tell you that fire brick is a refractory brick made up of ceramic materials. And there are two main types of fire brick, at least from my understanding. There's pumice and there's dense. The pumice is lightweight, has a very high R value, and can withstand very high temperatures, but none that I could find online or anywhere we're food safe. The dents are a bit heavier, have a lower R value, but can still withstand some pretty high temperatures. And some of them are actually food safe. Now, one of them is made by Rutland. Rutland is a North Carolina-based company, started in 1883. Now, to be sure of its safe use, looking out for you, and for myself, because I have a family, I reached out to Rutland directly and said, hey, here's what I want to do. I want to put your fire brick inside an offset smoker with no direct food contact. Is it food safe? And they said, yes, food safe and a great way to insulate your firebox. Now, Rutland sells their bricks in packages of six, so two boxes minimum will help you get this job done. Now, when it comes to laying in the brick, I don't know which way is the best. There's probably some folks out there that have better ideas than me on how to do this, but this is how I decided to set it up. One thing I will point out, adding this brick will elevate the fire, which in my opinion is a good thing. It'll get more oxygen down below. Plus, if you own a Pecos, this brick will rise the bottom up over that pesky lip at the door, which will make cleaning out all the ash much easier. At least I think so. So at this point, I could leave you with that and say, hey, buy the fire brick, it works, right? But none of my videos are complete without some testing, so let's get to it. What I did was I lit a chimney of coals, and when it got white hot, I dumped it in the firebox, then added a chimney of unlit coals, two splits. When that lit, I closed it down and let it run. Initially, the temps in the cook chamber were about 25 degrees higher on the left, but that could have been due to variations in the charcoal. My focus here was the temperature outside of the firebox, taking readings at the face, bottom, and top every hour for three hours as the fire diminished and ultimately went out. It was clear that the insulated side was cooler on the outside, in the end, the fire brick did show that it was retaining heat, plus the bricks made cleaning up way easier. You know, these results weren't mind-blowing, but the more I thought about it, it made more sense to put the coals directly on the brick. That way they get hotter and hotter sooner, which in theory would maximize heat retention and help us maintain a coal bed longer. And because of the stack extension, we have more airflow and draw into the firebox and through the chamber, so there's really no need for a grate anyways. So I ran the same test again, this time with the coals directly on the brick. I 
out the gate, things were looking pretty similar, but by the second hour, the fire brick was obviously warming up faster because the readings on the underside were way warmer than they were before. Temps in the cook chamber were also holding on longer and longer on the fire brick side, well beyond the three hour mark. So much so that I just kept on monitoring it. And after five hours, there were still signs of heat retention and inside the firebox, there was enough of a good coal bed, though it may be hard to see, to toss on a split and get the fire going again. Pretty impressive. Now I will also note that I have done a cook with the coals directly on the brick. Whoa! And I will say, without question, the fire brick did help retain a good coal bed. I could get splits going faster and it really seemed to help lessen those roller coaster temperature swings we all know so well. In the end, the brick was in great shape. No cracks. The only downside is that some ash will work its way through the cracks in the brick, so it's best to remove it, at least once in a while, to give the firebox a good cleaning. This will really help prevent rust and extend your smoker's life. So there you have it. I think uh, adding fire brick to your firebox is a good modification. It'll help you retain heat, help you keep a cold bed longer, and help you maintain temperatures, all of which is going to lead to less fuel consumption and ultimately save you money. See you next time.